Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yurisha, and I want to invite you to hit that like and subscribe button and drop us a comment if you will. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you receive all of our updates. God bless you. Come on, let's get to the Word. So in Mark 16 and 15 and in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, listen saints, we have clear marching orders directly from Jehovah Sabaoth directly from the Lord of hosts, directly from Jesus Christ, our commander in chief. And those orders are to go. Somebody shout go. Not only to McKeesport, not only to Pittsburgh, not only to the USA, but around the earth. We are to take this gospel, this hidden treasure everywhere we go in the name of Jesus. Now I want to share a personal testimony how we arrived here at 525 Market Street and I was thinking about this, and you know how back in the Old Testament, everything was verbally passed down. They would tell the story, they would tell the story, and that's how they became to remember the stories that we read about today. As a matter of fact, many times they built little stone monuments, so when their children would pass by that monument, that's where they would remember, oh, this is where Joshua over through Jericho, and they would have different monuments around for remembrance sake. So I want to give a personal testimony how we ended up here, as many of you know. I was involved in the recording industry for more than 30 years, along with serving in the ministry in various capacities. Nearly 15 years ago, our family, we were sent on a quest to find a space to house our recording studio because our agreement for our previous space was terminated. At that time, listen, we had zero intention on purchasing a church building. None. I had no intentions, listen, church, on pastoring for that matter. It, it wasn't even on my radar. I never went to cemetery, I mean seminary. I never went to a Bible school. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? I don't have anything against education. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Education is a good thing. But I'm just telling you my path. I'm just telling you what God did in my life. I never planned, listen, overseeing a congregation. It wasn't my vision. However, hmm. had, hey, had another vision. He had another plan. Come on, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know y'all know this. I know the plans. I have. God has a plan for each and every one of our lives. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. You might have plans today, and that's a good thing. It's okay. But hear me when I tell you somebody, Father has plans for your life as well. And I've learned throughout my 40 years, God's plans are always 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 the best plans my god i want to encourage somebody this morning don't be afraid to set your plans aside and get on board with his plans we're talking about a faith walk this morning we're talking about by faith somebody shout by faith so we began to search for a, a building, a new location for the recording studio back in August 2008 when our agreement from our previous building was terminated. During that search, during that transition time, God started moving in my heart. He started laying on my heart about having Saturday night, Saturday night worship services, not necessarily to have a church, but just to have worship services. Because for years, the Judah Ministries praise team used to travel all over the city holding worship services at different churches that would have us. At our home church, we would have it once a month or so. We even went overseas doing worship conferences and worship service. So I said, well, you know what? If we're going to get a studio, why don't we get a place that, you know, maybe can seat a few people and we can have have our own worship services. Sounded like a good plan to me. Mm. Sometimes, listen, God has to remove us from our comfort zone to get our attention. It was in the transition time, ah, it was in my wilderness time 
that God began to speak to my spirit, man, because now I was open. Listen, I had to be fired from another church. How could Christians fire you, pastor? Well, let me tell you something. That didn't happen once, Pastor Delise. It happened two times. Y'all know what it is, the left foot of fellowship. Anybody ever received the left foot of fellowship somewhere along the line? Y'all hear what I'm saying? But many times, listen, saints, I've got to, it, it, it's, it's not until we get to that place between a rock and a hard place, then our ears perk up a little bit. Oh, God, what are you saying? What are you saying, Lord? You're saying to do what? You're saying to go where? How many of you know God knows how to get our attention? Mm. But how many of you know that as soon as we begin to take steps in our faith walk, God begins to give us new revelation. He begins to give us new vision. He begins to give us expanded vision. He begins to open doors that we never thought would open. God will begin to arrange divine appointments. You'll meet people and develop relationship, and it's all for the glory of his kingdom. But listen, here it is, saints. We have to take the initiative. We have to take the steps so that God can direct them. We have to get up off our assets and begin to invest ourselves into the kingdom of God. God cannot drive a parked car. We got to get moving. We must be willing, listen, to say, here am I, Lord. Send me and without conditions. And then when he sends you, my friend, Go. Don't try to debate him. Don't try to negotiate the terms of the agreement. Just go. God is looking for somebody with some obedience. Listen, it's one thing to hear the voice of the Lord, but it's a whole other thing to take a step of faith and trust him in the thing that he told you. Go. You can't say, I'll go to the mission field if I get a five-star hotel. I'll go on the mission field if, it, if I can fly first class and have, watch, watch, have a proper toilet. Because out in the mission field, listen, listen, especially ladies, sometimes, I don't watch myself here. Aiming for a hole in the ground in the dark is not so easy. Come on, do I got a witness? Well, no, everything has to be perfect before I go. Everything has to be paid for. Come on, saints, we're talking about faith. If your vision, your vision, not God's vision, if your vision isn't larger than your bank account, if it's not larger than your intellect, if it's not larger than your human resources, my friend, then it's not your vision, or it's not God's vision. That's your vision. Because God's vision will always exceed your bank account. Oh, I wish somebody would help me out and say amen there. Because he's the provider. Because he's going to get the glory. Instead of if kind of faith, we need even if kind of faith. Kind of like Shadrach, Meshach, and uh, Abednego. We need even if kind of faith. Even if I have to pay my own way. Even if I have to do a fundraiser. Even if I have to go without sleep or a meal. Lord, send me. Here I am. I'll go. Come on. Is there anybody like that in here this morning? Listen, saints of God, you will be amazed at how God will show up as Jehovah Jireh. He will provide. You'll be amazed what he accomplishes through us and in us when we place ourselves in a place of faith and trust in him alone. Now, I know I've shared some of these testimonies before with you, but we're talking about by faith. Somebody say by faith. I think I have a slide here, Caleb. My first trip to India... 2015, first time going, first of all, I flew Pittsburgh to Boston, got to Boston. I didn't have a visa because they changed the laws. They wouldn't let me board the flight overseas. So I had to hotel up in Boston, had to sleep two nights. It was in January. I mean, it was miserable weather. 
I had no passport, so I'm online talking to guys in India. We're trying to get, finally I get a, uh, a passport, and then I board the flight. I lost all my money for the flight because it was non-refundable because they just considered me a no-show. But I fly to India some 25, 30 hours, get there. From there, we drive to the coast, which was another 13 hours. Brother man was exhausted. Are you hearing me? So we drive all the way to the coast. We get there about 9 o'clock in the evening, and a pastor has us over for dinner. So we go in, and we have some nice biryani and a uh, big curry. I mean, he had everything spread out. Now, how many of you know you eat a bunch of rice at 9 o'clock at night? It's nap time, somebody. <laughs> but after all of this, we're sitting around. Okay, pastor, you ready to go preach? I'm like, say what? <laughs> Yeah, there's a, we're, we're having a church service, and, but so many people came out, we couldn't even hold it in the small room where we're going to do it at an open-air meeting. I said, all right, let's go. So we drive an hour to this place. It's 10 o'clock at night. I've been traveling for, I don't know, two days. I'm exhausted. I, let me tell you something, all right? Can I confess something to you? I did not feel like preaching the gospel of Jesus. I, I, I'm a human being, somebody. I am not a robot. I wanted to go find a B-E-D, somebody. But God. I said, all right, let's go. So we get there, and it's, a, it's a, an Indian village where there's no electric, and the only thing you could see is the headlights, you know. And I see all these little elephants and little uh, donkeys and monkeys and, you know, statues of everything because of the idolatry there. So we finally pull over. And we're going up this building, and I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this, church. We had to go up to a rooftop. It was like, I felt like I was in the book of, the, book of Acts. I mean, it was like New Testament kind of dirt roads. We're walking up these steps, and there's like no guide rail. I mean, and they're only about this wide. I don't know if you know, but I'm not like a real little man. <laughs> So I'm going up these steps. With, we're using our flashlights of our phone so we could get up there because there's no lights. Finally, we get to the top. There's probably an, about 80 people on this rooftop just sitting on the ground. They've been waiting for hours because there was a preacher from America coming. So they're sitting there, and I get up there, and they have a little generator. They have one light bulb hanging. That was it. Now, okay, here's the preacher. Preach, preacher, <laughs> you know. Now, I'm a note preacher. I like to read my Bible here and there. There was no light. I couldn't see any. I didn't have no internet access. I couldn't see anything. So basically, listen, church, I just laid out a simple gospel message, probably 10 minutes long. I said, listen, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Is everybody a sinner? Yes. There's one God, not millions of gods. He gave his one and only begotten son in Jesus Christ. Come on, you know the story. Jesus Christ. I said, if there's anybody here today that wants to receive the forgiveness of their sin and call on the name of Jesus, I want you to come to the altar. Every person on the altar there came to the altar. This is a photo up on the screen from that service. You can't even see most of the people because it's, it's so dark up there. There was one light bulb. Off in the distance, I could see shadows of other people standing on the rooftops of other buildings. We were there till 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning, praying for every family that came to Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something, church. I did not feel like preaching the gospel. But in spite of myself, oh, come on, somebody. I don't care what you don't feel like doing when God has called you to a task. We must be faithful to what God has called us to. Hey, this is Pastor Michael Yurisha, and I hope you enjoyed today's short word. Now, you can help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the earth by simply hitting that like button, subscribing to our channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell, and last but not least, share this message with all your friends and family. Well, God bless you and Maranatha. Jesus Christ is coming soon.